All right, this third example might appear at first to be a little bit trickier, but we're going to approach it, first of all, from using a similar approach we've done for those other two. Let me just rewrite it here first. So if we decide that first we're going to change everything into sine and cosine, that is going to change into cos over sine. We're going to leave this cosine the same. But what we're going to do is create a common denominator here. So we're going to multiply it by sine x over sine x. And the whole thing is over 1 over sine x plus 1. All right, that cotangent turned into this. That cosine turned into cosine sine over sine. And on the bottom there, that cosecant turned into 1 over sine x. So if we proceed from there by recognizing, well, there's a few things you could do here. You could, on the top here, you can combine those into a single fraction, in which case you'd get sine x cos x plus cos x over sine x, and then the whole thing over. Now, if we're, if we're going to do it this way, what I should have done up here is change that one into something I could add to this. All right, so I should have made this one. I'm going to go back and do that now. Into one, you can multiply. You can multiply by whatever you want here over that same thing to get this. So I'm going to make that into sine x over sine x. Okay, so that's what that one turned into. Here's a fourth color here, green. So then what I have on the bottom is one plus sine x over sine x. All right, so you have those two single fractions. I'm going to go up here now. If I have uh, if I have those two fractions, what I can do, let's give myself a bit more space. Instead of uh, divide, instead of having one fraction divided by another, I can invert the second one that you're dividing by. So let's see if I can write this small enough. Plus cos over sine x. Instead of dividing by this fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. So now sine x and on the bottom is what used to be on the top down there. Now at this point you might recognize I can divide each of those, cancel those out. And I just have sine x cos x plus cos x over this one plus sine x. And I can factor that top expression, this binomial here. I can factor out the cosine. So I can make this cosine x times sine x plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. And that binomial is the same as that binomial. So I can cancel them out. And I just have cos x. That's the single trig function that it is equivalent to. Now you can, at different stages here, re by recognizing things, make it a lot, you know, get there a different way, which we're going to do right now. I will get rid of all of this stuff and we'll try it one more time here. There we go. Now we're going to start the same way we did before by taking that, except I'm going to leave the first thing just as cos and I'm not going to change that. I am going to change cotangent into cos over sine as I did before. On the bottom I'm going to change this to 1 over sine. I'm going to leave that one alone. The reason is because if you happen to notice here that the only thing in the denominator of any fraction within here is sine, what I can do is multiply the entire fraction by sine x over sine x. Because what I'm doing then is I'm multiplying by one, I'm not changing it, which is okay. If I multiply this by each of those things on top, I am going to get cos x sine x for that first term. And if I have sine times cos over sine, that is just equal to, oops, that's just equal to cos. And on the bottom here, sine times 1 over sine is 1, and sine times 1 is sine. Now that's already something that we had quite a few steps later, so this is quite a bit shorter. 
if you happen to recognize that. If you happen to recognize that the only denominator there is sine, therefore multiplying it by sine will clear out all those denominators. All right? Because then what you can do is what we did before, which was factor that top, cos times 1 plus, well, actually, we'll keep it in the order it is there, sine plus 1 over 1 plus sine. And as before, you can divide out that binomial, cancel it, and you're just left with cos x. So that's a shorter way to do it, provided you recognize that this is going to work. All right, so that's that, uh, that's that last example there. Now, what you should do is try some of that practice, all right? Try some of the practice that's, that's in your, uh, your booklet or those questions right there. And then those more expressions right there and see how you do. Oh, and almost forgot those last ones down there, all right? That's it, other than you practicing.